day and welcome to this fifth Sunday of Lent as we gather to share the good news of our faith in Jesus Christ and to have faith and fellowship together this day. I am glad you're here to join me for this time of worship and service and I invite you now to share with me our call to worship for this Sunday. Let us share it together. You have heard that it has been said, love your neighbor and hate your enemies. But I say, love your enemies. Pray for those who persecute you. In that way, you will be acting as true children of your Father in heaven. For he gives sunlight to both the evil and the good, and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. From Matthew 5. And as we gather this day, we share a welcome. I am glad you're here to share this service with me. A word of well-being that our journey this coming week is safe and sound and secure with God's grace and Christ's love to guide us and the Holy Spirit to empower us. And that we share a word of peace. Peace of body, mind, and spirit. It is, in Hebrew, a single word that has these meanings. Welcome, well-being, peace. It is the word shalom. It is the first spoken word Jesus said at the resurrection to Mary, who was at the gravesite. And I invite you now to share with me that word together. Shalom. Shalom in Christ. As we gather in the Shalom of Christ, we light the Christ candle. The candle represents faith, hope, and love in Jesus Christ. And remember the words of Jesus who said to us, I am the light of the world. The light that shines in the darkness can never be put out. The light of Christ, the shalom of Christ, is ours this day. Amen. I invite you now, in our time of worship and meditation, to share with me our prayer of preparation for our time together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we praise your name and we bow before you. In the midst of turmoil and strife, you are our anchor and guide. As long as we hold on, we will never lose our way. Through every storm and every battle in our lives, we only have to look up and feel your presence. The light of your love burns bright and deep within us. Oh, how we love you and give you the praise. Continue to shine your eternal light and love on us. Help us to do thy will. This is our prayer in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Our scripture lesson this day is from Luke's Gospel, the sixth chapter. It is called the Sermon on the Plain. Jesus is speaking. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you, and when they exclude you, revile you, and defend you on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that is what their ancestors did to the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when they speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you, if anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if everyone takes from you away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others what you would have them do to you. May God add blessings to the reading of this word and bring blessings to those who have transformed the written word, the spoken word, into the living word in their hearts and minds and spirits. This text in Luke's Gospel is comparable to the text in Matthew's Gospel, which we call the Sermon on the Mount. It is here called the Sermon on the Plain because Jesus was on the hilltop, doing healing and teaching, and he came down, was on a plain, and he spoke these words to his disciples, and he speaks these words to us this day. There are three parts to it. One is blessed. Blessed are you who are poor. What it means, in a sense, is not in terms of financial things, it means poor in that you're well open to receiving help, care, and the good news of Christ. That you do not have all the answers. For yours is the King of God. And where is the Kingdom of God? It starts right here in us. That when we commit and confirm our need to have faith, to have trust, to have belief, and say, yes, I need help. You are in the kingdom of God because that's the entrance way. Blessed are you who are hungry. It doesn't mean just about food, but hungry for knowledge, for wisdom, for faith, for care and concern for yourself and others. Blessed are you who seek that kind of hunger which you can give yourself to others for their needs. For you will be filled. I think the term today is fulfilled. Satisfied in mind and spirit. Blessed are you those who weep. We're going through a time of, I think, great social, economic, and political crisis in our country. It's often said, I see it, that's my experience. But if we have the faith, we have the courage, the strength to go forward in our daily journeys, we'll have a time of joy. 
Easter is not a time of sorrow after the death of Jesus. It is a time of joy and celebration. Our Lord lives and lives for us, lives with us and within us and through us. Rejoice on that day when people will accuse you, upset you, hurt you, because our faith helps us to pass through it. Our faith, our trust, our journeys help us to pass over those moments of stress, concern, loss, pain, fear, that we can weep for joy, that we have overcome. As the hymn says, we shall overcome. We shall overcome someday. That is that joy of passage and fulfillment. But then he has a member what's called woes. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. That's it, folks. Having wealth, being very wealthy, it's not my personal experience, but from what I can understand, it's not always satisfactory. There's this always in that a need for more. As in an addiction, there's always a need for more and it's never fulfilled. Woe to you who are filled now. You'll be, you will be hungry. Those who are self-satisfied. Will often be a time of crisis and uncertainty. And hunger and thirst for more and may not be there. Woe to you who are laughing now. I see in our politics there are people who are making jokes of everything, laughing at everybody else, looking down on everybody else. Someday you too will mourn. And the laughter won't be there in your lives. But for us, the laughter, the faith, and the joy, which is more than laughter, is with us all always. Woe to you when people speak well of you. Be careful. They can change their minds and hearts. Whatever happens, be prepared. Because this moment may pass. How many, in a sense, well-known people pass and they become unknowns? forgotten, left behind. But our faith teaches us God knows who we are, remembers us, and guides us. But I say to you, and this I confess is maybe really hard for all of us to do at times, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer them the other. Give up your coat if you have to. I think the last sentence says it very simply. But this is all about it. Do unto others as you would want them to do unto you. Be above the tide, be above the crowd, be above the principalities and powers of our time to be people of faith. Faith in a loving God, hope in a gracious Christ to walk with us at any time, any place, and love. The love that's present within us from every breath we take in 
and share with us others. Do to others as you would want them to do unto you. I believe that's called the golden rule. The golden suggestion, the golden idea. But I understand as people of faith, we are above and beyond the present moment, no matter, matter where it may be. And we can be the ministers and guides of bringing about that change, of bringing and overcoming the stresses of life, the uncertainty of life, the cares of life. As we say throughout the Oculus Community Church, very simply, we are a caring Christian community. We are caring in our daily lives, in our worship lives, and what we do to share our lives with others. God bless you and God keep you until we meet again. And do unto others as you would want them to do unto yourself. Amen. As we gather for the pastoral prayer this day, I invite you to lift up your prayers to God. To remember that as we journeyed Easter, we are people of faith, hope, and love. To lift that up. And as it says in the Sermon on the Plain, to be people who are compassionate and caring to others. Where in times, as I said, of political uncertainty, economic fear sometimes, and that we need to be people who look at the gifts we can give and share with others with our presence, our concern, our compassion. So I invite you now, again, pray for yourself, for your needs, and to pray for those you know who need a word of prayer, prayer body, mind, and spirit. And to pray for our nation and the nations of the world that are in conflict, that they may find peace and true peace in each other. Let us pray. Gracious God, loving God, compassionate God, you who brought the Christ, the Messiah, into the world, to hear good news, to experience healing, compassion, and concerns for each of us in our daily lives. You who come as the breath of the Spirit, which begins at our very birth in the first breath we take, a breath that empowers us, that encourages us, that gives us strength to go forward. We lift up our prayers to you today for the needs we see in our nation, political, social, economic, those who have experienced violence and hatred, that they may pass through it, for those who have lost loved ones due to violence or hatred, they may experience your grace in the hands of Christ reaching out to hold them and grant them compassion. Pray for those who need a word of prayer in body, mind, and spirit for their recoveries, for their help. To pray again for the world around us, in Israel and Gaza, that there be compassion there as the death toll mounts in Gaza. To be compassion for those who are in care for those in Ukraine who are seeking to maintain their freedom those anywhere who need compassion, freedom, care, our prayers are lifted up. God of grace, Christ of glory, and the power of the Holy Spirit, bless each of us and keep us this day. Amen.
invite you now to share with me the prayer of Jesus towards the prayer, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you so much for being with me on this fifth Sunday in Lent, and I look forward to seeing you next week. Have a gracious week, a good week, and a healthy week. God bless you and keep you, and I invite you now to share our benediction together. Give your gifts in secret, and your Father who knows all secrets will reward you openly. Go in peace. Amen.